once upon a time in a remote village when magic was commonly seen in life. There was a poor and struggling farmer family. They were so poor that they had to let their only son go to town and work there. However, at the time, everyone's life was so hard and struggling that even taking care of themselves was a difficult task, let alone hiring an outsider. In everyone's memories, those were the bleak winter days. The heavy snow covers all paths. The father tried again and again, but no one accepted his son to work for them. This made him extremely distressed. His son, Sam, still a mischievous and innocent child, when his father said he would take him to town, he happily followed without question. The father and son kept walking in the snow and stopped at a large rock beside the road. The old father sat down tiredly and let out a long, exhausted sigh. Oh. After that sigh, suddenly there was a tiny old man, about the size of one hand, with a sly face appeared, stroke his beard, and laughed. Hey, you there. What did you call me for? A tiny person appeared, and he was able to talk. That fact made them stare at the old man with wide eyes and amazement. Who, who are you? I am, oh. The little old man, looking at the gesture of two people in front of him, felt delighted and immediately laughed. You just said my name, and I know very well that you have taken your son to town several times already. Can you tell me, what did you do that for? The old father calmed down and started talking about his suffering. My life, it's so miserable. I couldn't manage to raise my kids. I have to find someone who can take him in for a job, just for a while, through this poverty crisis. But no one accepted the boy. Hearing what the father said, the little old man looked happily. He stared at Sam with a lustful look that scared the boy. The boy then hastily hid behind his father. You don't believe this little old man can take care of the boy, right? Watch this. Even in his wildest dream, the father could not have expected that an old man would adopt his son. But it was his shape that made the father hesitant. To be able to convince the father, the little old man then used his magic to take out a chest of gold coins which was much bigger than his size. Give the boy to me and all of this is yours. The father gazed at the gold coin's chest. Exactly one year later, at this same moment of the day, you should come to this very place to pick up your child. And he started to have a little bit of faith in this little old man. He thought, maybe he's not an ordinary person. He thought that the boy would be happy and in just a year he would be able to see him again. That bright future made him accept to hand over his little son to the little old man, without even paying attention to the boy's anxious mood at that moment. I agree. Sam, you should follow him. You will be well fed, well cared for. Father, I'm so scared. With the father's approval, the little old man put down the chest, took the hand of little Sam, and spoke up to comfort him. Come on, boy, don't be afraid. Follow me. Then the little old man and Sam immediately disappeared before the astonished father's eyes. A year later, remembering the little old man's appointment, the poor father went a long way to the old place to pick up his son. When the father was still confused because there was no one there, the little man appeared on the rock. He looked at the father and laughed wryly at him. Here I am, as promised. Prepare to get your son back. After saying that, he clasped his hands together and started mumbling incomprehensible spells. As soon as he finished his words, seven black cats appeared from the rock, roaring, wiggling their tail and looking down at the man standing below. The father dazily stared at the cats without understanding what was going on. The little man glanced over the father and said, 
The father vaguely felt that something was not right. Here, your son is among these seven cats. If you choose right, feel free to take him home. If you choose wrong, you can forget that you had a son. He guessed his son was in danger, so he felt extremely scared. You... you dare? Who are you? How can you turn my boy into an animal? Hurry and give him back to me. The little man stood on the rock, puffed out his chest, and proudly said, I am a wizard. Wizard O is me. Say no more. Hurry up and choose. If you can't figure it out, you can wait until next year to bring him home. But if you're wrong, you're gonna lose him. Of sending his child to the bad guy. He helplessly watched the black cats roaring on the rock. He knew that one of them was his pitiful son. He felt the boy looking at him for help. But there was nothing he could do. Knowing it is impossible to take a risk, the father held back his emotions for his son and left. As he walked, he cried and muttered to himself. If you can't figure it out, you can wait until next year to bring him home. But if you're wrong, you're gonna lose him. The old and miserable figure of the father gradually faded away. Time after time, under the rock, seven foxes this year, seven deers the year after, gazed bewildered at the old man with a sad expression. Just like that, six years passed by. The poor father still couldn't recognize his child. Every time the father came, the witch turned the boy into a different animal. He came every time with hope and came back disappointed. The witch was probably getting bored of his own game. So he decided to set another difficult condition for the old father. It's been six years and you haven't recognized your son. If you don't recognize him next time, he will have to stay as a slave for me forever. Then he suddenly disappeared, leaving the desperate father. After six years of not getting his child home, the old father was in such pain that he could no longer cry. He sat down on the side of the rock. His face was dull and lifeless. When his ears were buzzing from the snow and wind, he suddenly heard rustling footsteps. From behind the rock, a young girl walked out and came to help him. Please, don't be sad. Who are you? Just leave me alone. How can I not be sad? Maybe I will lose my only son forever. The girl gently soothed the old father, who was struggling in despair. I'm the daughter of the wizard, oh. My father is doing bad things, enslaving people. I cannot advise my father. Now he's trying to keep your son. Next year, he will bring out the herd of seven horses. Your son will be the third horse on the right. Remember to recognize him. Hearing the girl say that, the old father felt the last hope in the dark. A year later, as scheduled, the father came to the rock to pick up his child. Remembering the girl's words, the old father chose it right. For seven years, little Sam has grown into a handsome young man. He almost did not recognize his own son. It was a bitter and sweet moment for the father and son. The father's hands clasped Sam's hands as if he was afraid to lose his child again. Father, you are so lucky to recognize me. The wizard watched the father and son reunite. He knew that his game had failed. He gritted his teeth in frustration and then disappeared. After the moment of reunification, the father and son returned home. The innocent, mischievous Sam looked at his family's shabby house with sadness. He held his father's hand. For many years, I couldn't help you two. Our family is getting more and more miserable. But the witch's daughter taught me the shapeshift spells. Now I will turn into a black horse. Please bring it to the market to sell for money. But do not sell the reins. After I serve my owner for a few years, I will come back. Is that going to work? Sam nodded and smiled to encourage him. Finally, the father accepted. The next morning, the old father led a black horse to the town market to sell it. This is a precious horse, only 50 gold coins. Seeing a tall and beautiful horse at the market, people were curious and scrambled to see the horse closely. 
Wow, the horse is so beautiful. Yes, it is beautiful, but with that price, no one can buy it. Fifty gold coins? I'm gonna buy it. The father was delighted, preparing to deliver the horse. I will buy it for five hundred gold coins. The crowd heard that coming from behind, so they stepped aside to give way to the man. A rich, well-dressed merchant walked in. He stared at the horse without blinking. But I have to take the reins also. No, I won't sell the reins. Without waiting for the father to finish speaking, the merchant immediately grabbed the reins and shouted, Why do you have to keep these old reins? After saying that, he climbed on the horse and took off. The father ran after and screamed in panic. Stop, I won't sell it to you. Stop, oh, my son. The horse went very fast. Soon they both left town and came to a small forest. The merchant led the black horse who was trying to resist. He threw him straight into the cage and closed the door. You will not get away this time. After saying that, he immediately turned into the wizard O. He stood close to the barn door and looked at the black horse in a very pleased manner, without knowing that his daughter was hiding and saw it all. After waiting for the wizard to leave, the black horse looked up at the girl with tearful eyes and pleaded. The girl looked at the crying horse and felt pitiful. Please, help me again. Please let me go home. She decided to go to the stable, open the barn door, and release the reins. The horse who was freed immediately ran from the stable. Before he left, he turned his head to look at the girl, then immediately galloped away. The black horse galloped through the trees and unfortunately caught in the sight of the old wizard. The angry old wizard turned into a golden horse and followed the black horse. On the meadow, the two horses chase each other fiercely. They kept running until they came across a small stream. The black horse ran ahead and saw two girls sitting on the bank of the stream. He instantly turned into a beautiful, shiny gold ring to escape. The ring rolled out in front of the two girls. One of them saw, picked up the ring, and put it on her finger. Oh, what a beautiful ring! At that moment, the wizard O also got there and saw the black horse shape-shifted. Seeing two girls, he immediately understood what was going on and turned into a young man. To talk to them easier, when the two girls were gazing at the ring, the man approached and politely said, the girl looked at the polite man, then took off the ring and gave it to him. Excuse me, but this lady here is wearing my ring. Earlier, when I took a shower, I put the ring on the bank and forgot it. Until now, do I remember it? Please give it back to me. I don't know who it belongs to. So I put it on. If it's yours, I would like to give it back to you. The wizard was about to raise his hand to take it. But the ring just left the girl's finger. It immediately turned into a hundred thousand millet seeds that fell to the ground. The man immediately disappeared. On the ground, suddenly a sparrow appeared and pecked continuously at the millet seeds. It kept pecking and pecking until there was only one last grain left on the ground. The sparrow stared at the last grain and tried to peck it. Then the millet seed turned into a huge eagle soaring up into the sky. The sparrow looked up panically. When the sparrow was off guard, the eagle came back down and pecked hard on the sparrow's head. Having been hit in the head with a fatal blow, the old wizard completely lost his magic. That means that the old spells cast on civilians to turn them into slaves are destroyed. Sam returned to his human form. He returned to the wizard's house. Thank you. And opened the door to set free to the innocent poor. We are free. Since then, Sam was permanently rid of the old wizard to reunite with his parents. With the help of villagers, they gradually came out of poverty and have a happy, peaceful life. The Pandora's Box on the top of Olympus, where the gods of Greece lived, the clouds around were dreamlike. The head of the gods was Zeus. He sat on a majestic throne in the middle of a splendid palace. Suddenly, Hermes rushed in like a wind. Mighty Zeus, something has happened. 
What's wrong, Hermes the messenger? Why are you so hasty? Hermes said with a serious tone, My lord, after the two brothers, Prometheus and Epimetheus, created humankind, Prometheus stole the divine fire on Mount Olympus and gave it to humans. Zeus got angry. He smashed his lightning hard to the floor, creating a fierce spark. He got some guts. Did he forget what I said to him? Zeus got up and went down the stairs, swinging his hand to draw a magic circle in the air. A magical mirror appeared. He looked in the mirror to see what was happening on Earth. An eagle was spreading its wings in the sky. A tiger was roaring with sharp fangs. A deer was rushing through the bushes. Primitive men were holding many burning torches. Hermes also looked at all the species in the mirror and explained to Zeus. While creating all creatures in the world, Epimetheus granted them all kinds of abilities. Agility, speed, strength, wings, sharp claws. As for humans, he stole the fire and gave it to them. Now humans have unlimited power. They're not afraid of wild animals or darkness anymore. I'm afraid that humans will be a threat to all kinds of creatures. Zeus was frustrated. I must punish Prometheus and humankind. I can't let them do whatever they want like that. Sooner or later, they will cause disaster. Hermes, summon Hephaestus the blacksmith here. A short moment later, the blacksmith god Hephaestus walked into the palace. Mighty Zeus, here I am. Hephaestus the blacksmith, I have a business in need of your talent. Now mold for me a beautiful woman who is smart and has a sweet voice, pretty face, charming body, and skillful in art and music. Yes, my lord. I am afraid that I need support from Athena, the goddess of wisdom, Aphrodite, the goddess of beauty, Apollo, the god of light, and Hermes, the messenger, to make that woman have such charm. If you see fit, ask for their help. I want that woman to be attractive and charming. The blacksmith god followed the order of Zeus, working non-stop for several days and nights. After finishing, he called Hermes and Zeus to his work. In the hazy maze, a woman stepped out. She was absolutely gorgeous. She bowed gracefully to the gods. Zeus nodded, looking pleased. Beautiful, very beautiful, excellent. <laughs> This woman could be either the happiness or the sorrow. My lord, please give her a name. Zeus thought and gave the girl a small, intricately carved and crusted with sparkling gold box. Pandora. Call her Pandora. This will be a gift for you, but don't open this box in any case. Then Zeus talked to Hermes. You know what to do, don't you? Yes, my lord, I will follow your instructions. By order of Zeus, Hermes came to Earth to meet Epimetheus. What are you doing here, Hermes? Is it not enough to punish my brother Prometheus? He is suffering and chained in Mount Cretan. No, Epimetheus, Zeus has a gift for you. What gift? Epimetheus thought. But my brother Prometheus told me not to receive any gift from any god or goddess because it will bring sorrow. With that, Epimetheus said, I don't want any gift. No, Epimetheus, you haven't even seen the gift. While Hermes had not finished his words, Pandora gently and shyly emerged from a bright light. In her hands, there was a beautiful, intricately carved small box. Epimetheus couldn't take his eyes off Pandora. Epimetheus, Zeus granted her to you as your wife. She will live with you for the rest of your life. Epimetheus took Pandora's hand. He was confused. How beautiful she is. Oh God, what should I do now? Epimetheus thought for a while, then said, Hermes, I accept Pandora to be my wife. I fell in love with her right at the very first sight. Send my thanks to Zeus, please. 
So the gorgeous, wonderful, and intelligent Pandora became Epimetheus's wife. One day, while she was brushing her hair, Epimetheus came in holding her intricately carved box. Pandora, what is this box? This is the wedding gift that Zeus gave us, but he told me not to open it in any case. Epimetheus looked at the box and said, So don't open it. Although the box is so glamorous, don't open it if Zeus said so to you. Epimetheus put the box in a large chest and said, I will place it here. It's better if we're not going to see it around anymore. Now, I have to go for a while. Please stay home and keep it safe. Pandora was still combing her hair while looking at the big chest where the secret box was put in by her husband. What is in the box that Zeus doesn't want me to see? Must be something precious or a big secret. Pandora opened the chest and gently opened it. Inside, the sparkling box tempted her to open it. Pandora lifted the box and thought, This is the gift that Zeus gave me. Why can't I have a look inside? She tried to open the lid of the box, but suddenly stopped. No, I can't. But the box kept tempting her. Such a beautiful box like this cannot contain anything ugly. She opened the lid of the box. Then a bright light shone from the box on Pandora's face. Epimetheus had just got home. Seeing that, he said panically, Pandora, close the box now! But it was too late. A black monster with many heads escaped from the box. On its tentacles, many skulls and many beasts fiercely laughed. Aha! How stupid you are! Pandora panically dropped the box. The monster circled around her and Epimetheus, emitting a cloud of dark smoke and then flew away. When the couple has not stopped panicking, a bright light appears in front of them. In the light, Zeus appeared. Do you know what you and your curiosity just did? It will travel around the world and cause catastrophes that humankind will have to suffer. Greed, selfishness, envy, betrayal, lying, war, hate, poverty, disaster. It is my punishment for Epimetheus, Prometheus, and humankind. Pandora burst into tears and knelt at Zeus's feet. Epimetheus also knelt to beg. Please give humankind a way out. Look, is there anything left in the box? Epimetheus looked back in the box. In it, there was a handful of glittering dust that remained. My lord, what is this? That is hope and love. Zeus smiled. They are the only thing that can help you overcome all these sorrows. Although it's not much, hope and love will save you and help you to overcome all your suffering. After saying that, Zeus disappeared. Pandora and Epimetheus bowed to Zeus. Thank you, my lord. Epimetheus hurriedly took the box and ran outside to throw the dust into the sky. The dust glittered the space around. The wind carried them everywhere. Pandora asked Epimetheus, Epimetheus, what are you doing? I want these hopes and love to fly over this world to alleviate the bad things and pain that mankind will have to suffer. They watched as glittering glitter dust flew away, hoping their mistakes would be forgiven. Just because of the curiosity which seemed harmless, Pandora opened Zeus's secret box. She let greed, selfishness, betrayal, lies, and war, poverty, disease, and natural disasters cause humanity so much suffering. But fortunately, hope and love are still there. It will save humans so they can still find happiness. <laughs>